everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Brenna Jean, a future doctor, and today we're going to be talking about the medical school application timeline. So basically what you should be doing when in order to be competitive when you're applying to medical school. So let's get started. So keep in mind this timeline is built from not only my experience, but just listening to the advice of other pre-med advisors and counselors and doing a little bit of research online. So I've tried to be relatively comprehensive in this timeline, but if there's anything I've missed, let me know in the comments below so that we can help other pre-meds make sure that they're being competitive during the application process. Okay. So really before January of your application year, there's quite a few things that you should be doing. And I mention this merely for those of you who aren't ready to apply yet, but you know you're going to be going to medical school and you wanna be doing what you can to help make that process easier when it gets down to the wire. So in case you weren't aware, the typical application season starts in May. So like if you want to go to school starting in fall of 2020, like me, then you would have started working on your actual applications in May of 2019. So depending on when you're watching this, just do some math. Yeah. That being said, there's work that you need to be doing before the actual application opens and then before then. So really before January of whatever your application year is, you should be doing a few key things. You should be looking for and establishing relationships with those people who are gonna write your letters of recommendation. Each school has different requirements on letters of recommendation and I have done a whole video about this. So go to this link, I don't know which side it appears on, and watch my video for a little bit of extra tips when it comes to getting some great letter writers. You should also be either working, scribing, volunteering, shadowing in a healthcare environment. So this is important because it's gonna give you something to speak to during your applications and during your interviews that will show people that you have experience in healthcare. I've done quite a few videos on these as well. So be sure to take a look at the link, watch what it's like to work as a scribe or how to get shadowing experience because those things are really important um, leading up to your application year. You wanna make sure that all of your potential coursework is being met. So each school, again, has different requirements slightly when it comes to what sort of pre-med classes you're going to need. However, I liked what my school did. They gave a very comprehensive list of all the potential classes that you need to be taking. So I'll try and share that here. This is very much a catch-all type listing. So if, if you get all of these classes in your wheelhouse, you will qualify for like 99% of medical schools out there. Um, but if you already know where you're going to be applying, make sure to look at their course requirements to make sure you're taking all the courses that you need to in order to even qualify to apply. And finally, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that you should be doing, but in my eyes, this is very important. If you are not already, make sure you are financially prepared to apply to medical school. I was always told that it was going to be expensive, but I don't think I realized how expensive. I've done a video on how much it costs for me to apply to medical school. So the whole process from applications to supplemental applications to the interview process. So take a look at that video if you wanna get an idea of what I spent. And I didn't even apply to like the average number of schools. So you could be spending way more than that. So make sure you're doing what you can to financially prepare, whether it's working part-time, trying to um, do side jobs here and there, just make sure you have the money so that you can apply. And if you're worried about being able to afford certain things, look into fee assistance programs because those can often be really helpful for students who are maybe a little bit financially uh, disadvantaged, but are still incredibly qualified students for med medical school. Okay, okay, so those are all things that you should be doing before January of your application year. Then what happens? So between January and I'd say like 
April of your application year. Here are a few things that you can be doing to make sure you're really prepared once those applications actually open in the beginning of May. Request letters of recommendation. Again, I've done a video on this. You should have already established those really good relationships beforehand, but requesting early is so important because it's respectful to your letter writers and it gives them plenty of time to write something fantastic about you. If you haven't already, take the MCAT. I took the MCAT in January of my application year. I know many people who take it as late as April or May. I even know someone who took it in June. So it's not the end of the world if you take it in June. That being said, if you take it earlier and you don't do as well as you really wanted to, it gives you that time to take it again and try and get your score up before you start submitting applications. You should also be deciding where you actually want to apply and confirming that you meet all of their requirements. Start doing some research if you haven't already on where you actually want to go. Think about location, reputation, classes, statistics. So post statistics like placement rates into residency and the placement rates into first choice residency and board scores. Be taking a look at those things. Personal statement. If you haven't already started doing brainstorming and draft writing for your personal statement, you should definitely be doing that now or in the January to April timeframe. I've done a few videos on this as well for your benefit. So go back and reference my personal statement videos to get ideas on how to brainstorm, how to draft, how to peer review yourself, and just the overall process of personal statement writing because it is a big deal. It's a great way for admissions advisors to really see who you are as a person and why you want to pursue medicine as a physician. What you can also be doing during this January to April timeframe is actually prepping your applications. There's lots of information out there about what the different sections of your applications look like. So you can be prepping that now. Take the DO application, for example. So they have some pretty extensive sections for your work and experiences and your awards and honors and you get like unlimited entries in both. So starting to write little blurbs about the things that you've done, collating the number of hours that you've spent doing this, figuring out who your primary contacts are gonna be. Again, I've done a video on this, so go check it out, go take a look and start prepping some of that information now so that it's a much easier plug and play once those applications come. This applies as well to the AMCAS, except you're limited to 15 like work and experiences instead of having unlimited. Um, also the Texas uh, medical school application for, for Texas schools is a separate application. So remember that and they have separate essays that you have to do. And then if you're applying to any MD, PhD programs, this is also a good time to be preparing those uh, specific essays as well. Now we're moving on to May of your application year. So in May, that's a pretty big month. That's when all of the applications open for that application cycle. So the DO application, MD, all the Texas schools, depending on where you're applying, that's when they open. So really May, you should be hitting the ground running as far as filling in your applications, um, filling out your essays, making sure your letter writers are complete with their letters and have those submitted. I had mine submitted through a letter writing service at my school. They got uploaded uh, by my premed advising office. If you don't have something like that, then you need to provide them the link so that they can upload it directly to your application. You should also be ordering your transcripts, official transcripts from every single school that you went to because there will be a very tedious process of uploading the official transcript and then you have to go in and manually type in each of the classes and the credits and the grades that you got and that'll take some time and you have to do it from every single school you went to. So for example, I took one community class course to qualify some basic math requirement over the summer. Yeah, I had to figure out where to get that transcript from and uh, get that into my application. So some of those things can take a little bit longer than you think. So try and get that done as soon as possible in May. You should also have your MCAT scores released to your application. Now through the MCAS, I believe it automatically uploads, but I, I think you like pick which one you want sent if you've had multiple exams. And then for any other application, you just have to have that score sent to those applications and Voila, you're good, but make sure you get that done as soon as you can. Now, this is something I actually found out from doing research and it's actually not a bad idea. So a few of the schools that I applied to had me take an additional little test. It's called the Casper test. And it's basically like you're given a bunch of hypothetical 
professional situation. So you're in a professional setting and, and there's a disagreement and you're asked for your opinions or, or how would you interact with the people in that disagreement or things like that. And um, I've included a link to it in the description. So go check it out. Lots of schools participate in this test. So it might be beneficial for you to go ahead and register for a test date in May. That way you don't have to worry about doing it over the summer. But that being said, if none of your schools require the Casper test, then don't worry about it. But a few of mine did, so I had to take it anyway. I don't know, it's just a suggestion. And then this is something that I did a little bit of, but I really could have done more, is pre-writing for your secondaries. You can use the resources at your disposal. So Student Doctor Network is a good one, or friends who have applied, or just general knowledge that you're gonna be asked about certain things, like talk about your experiences in medicine. And if you're applying to osteopathic schools, I guarantee you, you're gonna get some secondary questions that are gonna be like, why osteopathic medicine? So you can start preparing for these smaller secondary essays in in May, once you have your application done, of course, that way, once you start receiving secondaries, because lots of schools send them out on, as a default, you can already have a head start on getting those written and then submit it. In May, if you can start submitting your DO and your Texas applications pretty much as soon as possible. I think Texas is like right away you can start submitting it. And then DO is like starting in the middle of May, you can start submitting it. If you can submit those applications in May, do that because then those will get sent out first thing after verification is done. At least the DO applications, they start sending those out in the middle of June. So if you can't get them submitted in May, great. I submitted mine in early June and I don't think it really like hurt me because I still got it submitted before um, like June 14th or whatever it was this year. All right, once June hits, then you can start submitting your MD application. So definitely do that as soon as possible. Make sure you're following up on all transcripts, letters of recommendation, your MCAT scores to make sure that it all gets in there. No matter what process you're using, what application service you're going through, they all have to go through a series of verifications. So a verification of your transcript, a verification of your uh, letters, a verification of your MCAT score. So there's certain things that all your your applications go through and if one of the boxes isn't checked it gets sent back to you and you have to fix it so make sure you're keeping up to date to make sure that your application gets verified so that it gets sent out as soon as possible and if it doesn't get verified go make those changes and fix it as soon as you can and then resubmit again in june continue pre-writing your secondaries what i will say is um i mostly applied to do schools because i really want wanted and will be an osteopathic physician. Um, and I got my first requests for secondaries back at the end of June. So like I was already submitting secondaries by the end of June. So again, having some, some content kind of pre-written for those essays makes that process a lot easier. In July and August of your application year, that's really like secondaries land. So you're gonna be getting lots of requests for secondary applications. It's mostly going to be requests for answers to essay questions. So make sure you are submitting those in a timely manner. I recommend um, no more than a week, a week and a half from the date that they get requested. I've also got requested for like long CVs or resumes as follow-ups for your secondaries, um, the Casper exam, I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, it's really the land of secondaries. So make sure you're being as timely as possible with getting those submitted because the sooner you get them submitted, the sooner it gets your application in front of admissions committees and the potential for interviews begins. I also recommend that you start prepping for interviews. I have some videos for that too. So go check those out and um, you should really, really be practicing. So try and get in front of a mirror, get someone to partner with you, but start practicing for those questions. I'd say starting in early August, really speaking, like depending on where you're applying, you could start interviewing for medical schools as soon as mid to late August. So you should start preparing for interviews at the same time as writing secondaries. And it's a great time to do that too, because you're very fresh in like, when you're writing your secondaries, you're fresh in all that content of, you know, the stories that you're pulling together, what your strengths are, why you love medicine. Like those are all examples of things that you could talk about in your interviews. The last little segment of the timeline is very large, September through the following April. 
During this time, you are kicking butt at interviews. I know you are. Letters of intent or letters of interest. I honestly can't speak well on that topic. This was one of the things that came up during research. Um, I never did those. So if you're someone who wrote letters of intent or letters of interest to your schools, comment down below and kind of let me know how you did that because I'm interested to see if they actually work. Once you start hearing back from schools and getting accepted, um, then it's really time to start reviewing potential financial aid offers or at least like what the tuition is at those schools and start doing the comparison game and figuring out you know, where you wanna go and what's gonna be the best match for you. You can also use this time to start applying for scholarships for medical school. So there's military scholarships, government scholarships, private scholarships, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Um, you just gotta do a little bit of digging. Finally, you gotta select your program. So once you start getting into a few places, then you can pick your favorite, get that deposit in and start planning for your move and for the next four years of your life. Like. <laughs> It's so exciting, but I, you know, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen for you. I believe, I believe in you. At the end of this video, um, I just wanna post a few of the upcoming deadlines and dates for the 2020, 2021 application year, since that's what's coming up next. Keep in mind, depending on when you're watching this video, maybe it's years in the future, who knows? Um, these dates stay relatively constant year to year. So if it's not the 2020, 2021 application year when you're watching this, just know it'll be around these dates. Other than that, that's all I have for you today. I'm sorry if this video is a little bit longer, but I think it's important to talk about the application timeline, especially if you're not familiar with what you need to do to stay competitive. And if you're feeling kind of lost as far as what you should be focusing on during the various months of the application cycle. So again, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comments. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions or want me to take a look at your personal statement. I'm happy to help out. Not a licensed professional. This is, will just be my personal peer revision help. Other than that, like this video if you like what you saw today and subscribe to see more content just like it. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, it's at Brenna J. Future Doc, I'm pretty cool. And um, yeah, that's all I got for you. So have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.